you have it. It's about 12 hours of work to get this thing in roller status. This is my first chassis mounted servo setup, so I had to come up with pan hide geometry, which I, I studied for a while to see how that works. But you can see the best way to do it is to have your pan hard and your link the same length and the same angle and they just move in parallel to each other and then you get no bump steer. Yay! I made my own pan hard bracket, my own pan hard link mount and I made uh, a double shear brace in the back for the shocks. Get it there. So I could use the same shocks all the way around instead of having to use short ones in the front and long ones in the back. It's got a pretty radical drive train angle, but it's pretty clear as you can see. I'm trying to get it so you can see. I got unbelievable amounts of steering considering the size of these tires and everything else. And I've got zero offset on the tires. Well, I've got 0 0.40 offset on the tires, which is like the minimum you can get using shifts hubs. I've got a temporary link made out of all thread rod here. See, and then you just absolutely have to do the link that way, or the tire will rub on it, or the or run into something. So it's really no choice. It's a beast. It's got a nice, uh, here, how should I drop it? Is it back a little bit? Well, you know, that thing comes off a jump. There's no bouncing. This goes right down. Shocks, this is with no oil in the shocks at all. Just, everything's just dry fitted. Yeah, buddy. Quite a bit of work. Got a really excellent approach angle. There's my approach angle in the front. Here's my departure angle in the rear. Okay. <laughs> so, pretty amazing. Thanks again to Ernie Ledbetter for selling me this chassis. This is what got me started on this whole thing. And uh, there's my beautiful transmission. Let's flip it over. See how nice the whole transfer case and uh, axles are. That's what you want to see. You want to be able to spin it, have it run a little bit. You can see my shift hubs in there. Huh. Yeah, you can probably see a little bit better how this servo is mounted up in the chassis. I got three bolts holding it. I can't really get at that bolt. And just to show you how that works, I mean, it doesn't have to turn very much to uh, get full lock. It has to turn more this way. And uh, that's just how it is. Servo's pretty well centered. I mean, it's pretty awesome. It's a little bit off, but you know, not too bad. Still got to get some uh, screws. I want to get some screws for the turn down some heads on some. I'm not sure that's what I like. You see, there's a little side to side play. That's because everything is just just finger tight. I don't even think I. Yeah, I didn't even put the. Uh, didn't even put the nut down on that. You know, it's all just finger tight because it's all coming apart. I don't want to really use any of these links. I want to make brand new links, complete new stainless links for everything, so these are just links I've cobbled together from all my various link parts to make something happen. Which is how I usually work and it just seems to work for me. I just have a whole bunch of different kinds of links and link parts and I just keep fiddling until I get everything so where it works the way I want. I think I'd like the ride to be just a tad lower, but you know what? When I put my hand under it, 
It's basically the same way I've had a lot of my crawlers when I first start off. I start off with them pretty tall and then I gradually drop them. And I think what I can do to get these to drop is I could put some internal springs inside the shock and that would uh, force it into a little semi-droop. That would be the way to go. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting Mount Storm. If you view comments, likes, if you enjoy this sort of thing, subscribe to my channel.